picking back up in 6.3, we are working on example 2A where our goal is to eliminate the parameters. Okay, so we want to get rid of T, T being our parameter. So in order to do this, you'll notice it even says up there in the directions, it even suggests by substitution. So we picked one of our equations. We picked the y equation because it was easier, right? We solved it for t. And then what was part two of this? Plug in the expression. Take whichever equation you solve for t and plug it into the other equation. So what I had written up here, and I'll rewrite it now, was substitute into other equation. And I'm just going to say other equation because it's not always going to be the same. Okay. So my other equation is x equals 1 minus 2t, correct? Except what do we know? We have something for t, right? Yes, we do. So now we're going to do x equals 1 minus 2 times t, which is? Negative y plus 2. Negative y plus 2. That's just okay. what you guys. Now, if you have y minus 2, you need to come back here and divide by a negative. y minus 2 is not okay. Okay, and let's do some cleanup here. x equals, I'm going to keep the 1. What about this 2 out front? Plus 2. We're going to distribute it, right? And keep in mind, you guys said it correctly, we're going to be distributing this as a negative 2, yes? So negative 2 times negative y is going to be plus 2y. Negative 2 times 2 is going to be minus 4. So if I clean this up, x equals one minus four is negative three plus the two y. Now, before I stop, the directions were to eliminate the parameter, which we have essentially done. However, the other part of this is to identify the parametric curve. So in other words, now that we've put this together, what is this, what is this graph? It's not a not a parabola like the previous problem. Well, it's like mx plus b. Ah. Linear Could it be b. put into mx plus y equals mx plus b linear equation? I believe it can be. It can be. And we could even do that real quick because we could solve for 2y. So in order to solve for 2y, we would add 3. So I'm going to have 2y equals x plus 3. To get y by itself, you would divide by, two. divide by 2. And if I divide, I'm going to divide both pieces by 2 and write it as y equals 1 half x plus 3 over 2. So when we solve these, generally what you'll see is, I'm not going to say they'll always get it to a y equals form, but they'll get it to a form that is what we know, is what we would graph. Okay, so when I identify this, when I identify the parametric curve, this is a line, right? And what do we know about this line? It's linear. <clears throat> a line is linear, yes. It's going to be positive. Specifically, what about this line, though? It's going to be positive. What does this equation tell me? Uh, if you were to graph this by hand right now, what do you know? Slope is one half. Y intercept, y, -intercept is y intercept is three halves. So this is a line with slope equals one half and y intercept equals three halves. Okay. Now officially, I mean, the key there is to be able to state that it's a line. But um, you know, a little bit of description here is what I was going for. And I kind of went into my B area, didn't I? You forgot the R on other. What did I do? The R on other and then you said you could take the And I'm going with this is bugging you. Yeah, I saw it earlier, but I just wasn't the same thing, and then okay. I just kept looking at it. Didn't look at it. Okay. Yeah. So that was A. Let's try B. X equals T squared minus 2, and Y equals 3T. 
Thoughts on where to begin this problem? Why does salt for t? Okay, salt for t. The y equation. Okay, I'm hearing a couple people say the y equation. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. You're going to get a fraction. However, the other option you're going to get a square root. Uh, you know, we're trying to pick the better of the two evils. So if we pick one of these, so if we use y equals 3t, when I solve that, divide by 3, and t is going to be y divided by 3 is what I wrote there. You could also write that as one third, one third y. Both are good. Doesn't really matter to me. Take that and substitute. Yes? So when we substitute, we're substituting into x equals t squared minus 2, correct? So we're going to have x equals, instead of t squared, I'm going to say Plus you. y over Plus 3, you. quantity squared, Plus you. minus 2. I got you. Okay. Now, let's do some cleanup here. Okay. Because as I look at this right now, you know, could you graph this by hand? Could we graph it on the calculator? Right now, no, because we don't really, you can't really tell what it is to graph it by hand. If you graph it on the calculator, you'd be going for a y equals form. Okay, so I don't really have a good form here that I could graph, so work with this a little bit. Um, what do you know about y over 3 quantity squared? Y squared over 9. Okay, we could clean that up to be y squared over 9. Still minus 2. Multiply by 9. Okay. If you're not crazy about that fraction, we could multiply by 9, yes? Yeah. I could go for that. So if we multiply everything by 9, and this is just because there's a denominator of 9, we can multiply both sides by 9. 9 times x is 9x. When we, when we distribute the 9 on the right, we're going to end up with y squared minus 18. Let's, we're not going to go all the way, but let's work to solve this for y. So in order to solve this for y, you would add 18, yes. As I said, we're not going to go all the way because we're going to talk about where we end up here. I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to end up with y squared equals 9x plus 18. I do actually like that, and we'll talk about why here in a moment, but it's going to make me mad if I try and write down there. So y squared equals 9 times x plus 2. I'm going to argue you guys should know what this is. The square makes me think grab a little The fact that there is one square should make you think parabola. The 9 means it's up. No, no, it's a vertical stretch of yeah. 9, two and then it's two two over 2. To the left. Okay. I like all these pieces. There's a there's a piece of this, kind of a big piece, that we're missing. Okay. I agree parabola. But what do you know? Okay, so what is our typical parabola formula? X squared. Y equals x squared. What do we essentially have here? Y squared equals x. So we essentially have x equals y squared instead of y equals x squared. What's that do to the parabola? Upside down. Not upside down. Sideways? Oh, sideways. Sideways. Did we do left and right parabolas this year? 
Yeah. Yeah, back in January. Okay. That was that chapter eight we did right in January when we did our parabolas and then we did ellipses and we did hyperbolas. Which are all gonna be coming back in a couple of weeks for final exams. So now so this is, you know, and here's what my brain says. My brain, like you guys, says, oh, y equals x squared parabola. Well, if it's single y equals x squared, that is a vertical parabola. It means it could be either up or down. down. Since this is the squares on the y instead, x equals y squared, then my brain knows left or right parabola. Okay. Now, the 2 does still move it left to because it's x plus 2. This 9, besides being a stretch, tells me that it's going to open to the left or right. Right. To the right because it's a positive 9 as opposed to a negative 9. Some of this sound familiar? Yes. Okay, now that we talk about it. So, yeah. So, I actually have it left here because here's the thing. If I see y squared equals this x value with all these other pieces, that's in the form of a parabola. Could you say y equals plus or minus the square root of this? We could, and that would work also, but then we don't necessarily talk about a parabola as much, so. I'm going to say it's a parabola opening right, because I want us to at least identify that it is a sideways parabola. Okay. Yeah, but we need it. There's a couple things we're going to talk about here yet. So. Oh, man. Okay, we got what we need here. Okay, example three. Still technically the same idea. It's eliminating parameters. The catch here is that we have some trick problems, right? Okay. So, thoughts of where to begin. Okay. Solve for T, which one? <laughs> They both In all honesty, does it really matter here at this point? No. Okay, so. Why don't you ask the question? I think we should ask. Not even should do Y, I just have to spite no. you. What did we do last time? We called me family murder. Y. We did Y, we did Y. Okay, I will support the going X then just oh, to be. Now. Okay, focus. X equals 2 cosine T. If we're going to solve this for t, how do we solve for t? First step? Divide by 2 and then cosine the first. Okay, divide by 2. So then I'm going to know that x over 2 is equal to cosine t. Officially then, when t is within your trig function you're trying to solve for it, we do use the inverse function. And so t is going to be equal to cosine inverse of x over 2. Okay, so that was your, I don't know that I necessarily need to write it up here, but that was a solve for t, yes? Okay, now if you solve for t, what is supposed to be your next step? Substitute. So, Oh, actually. Well, we're not going to just stay with me here, okay? Yeah. So if we're substituting, this is y equals 2 sine t, right? And so we're going to have y equals 2 sine of cosine inverse of x over 2. Okay. Well, let's see. We eliminated the parameter, yes? However, you're also supposed to be able to identify this bad boy. Is this something you can identify? Sign Throw it all in the calculator. Well, you can figure out that because that's just... 
And we might yeah, throw this in the calculator later because I'll be cur- I am curious to you know see what it comes out to be. But we're gonna take okay, not right now, not yet. Oh, I'm just stay I'm with me. Okay. What we're actually gonna do is we're actually gonna take a different direction with this. Okay. Now, this one, it kind of ended up ugly, right? Real ugly. Yeah. So we're gonna take a different direction with this. And the idea, and this is no, not something you should have known going into this problem. But because my x is defined as a cosine, my y is defined as a sine, we're going to use the idea, if I give the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, does that trigger, I would like to think that is a formula we know, or a graph we know. No? I can't remember what it's called, but it's I did not. It seems familiar, really right? It's a specific no graph. I mean, it's the same basic. We've talked about it. It's the same basic principle. Uh, I'm not talking. I'm talking about what no. graph is this? X squared plus y squared equals r squared. What does r often stand for in math? Radius. Radius. What is this a graph of? Circle. Circle. Yep. This is a graph. of a circle. So the formula for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the idea of x squared plus y squared and we're going to substitute into that. Okay. So if I substitute into x squared plus y squared, well, what is x? 2 cosine t. 2 cosine t, y squared, plus y squared. If we substitute into y squared, 2 sine t, y squared, yes? Okay, well, what do you know about 2 cosine t, y squared? Cosine t squared? Okay. 4 cosine squared t. Oh, uh, cosine squared. Now, we get, so I wrote it as cosine squared t, or I could write it as cosine t with parentheses and then square it. Now, you do have to be careful because when you say cosine t squared, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And that's not right. Now, if you put parentheses here, that makes it right. How you said it, you know, okay? So I tend to always try and put the square after the trig function before the variable to indicate that. Okay, 2 sine t quantity squared. 4 sine squared t. Okay, what do you notice about those two terms? I'm like the function. Okay, let's go for the GCF of 4. That works for me. If we go for a GCF of 4, I now have cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Does that equal 1? Now I'm ready to talk about identities. You guys were a step too early. You were seeing it. The 4 is a 4. What do we know about cosine squared plus sine squared? It equals one. That is one of our Pythagorean identities, one of our PIs. And so four times one. Four times one is? Four. Four. Okay. Where did this come from? This came from x squared plus y squared. This came from plugging in the x squared plus y squared. So our formula here, our equation representing this graph, is x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is a what? That's circle. A circle. circle. What do we know about this circle? Radius of 4. No, radius of 2. With radius equaling 2. And where is this? where is the center of this circle? At what? Origin. At the origin. 
So centered at zero, zero. Now, grab your calculators. Because if I recall correctly, this is not in the notes questions, but it is in your homework questions. We can graph these. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about graphing x squared plus y squared equals 4 or graphing y squared equals 9 times x plus 2. I'm not talking about graphing any of these. I'm talking about if we go back and from the very beginning, we could have graphed, for instance, this. As in, you can go into your calculator. Given the right settings, you can type this in. Check out your mode options. Whoa. If you change your calculator, now you're going to have to remember to change this back later because it's going to be really weird if you don't. But if you go into parametric mode, you can graph these. So do you see where you go to parametric mode? Yeah. There where it says function, you change that to parametric. Now, hit your Y equals button. Whoa. What happens now that you're in parametric mode with your Y equals buttons? No one of these things are so You have, when you go into your Y equals mode, or Y equals button, you have X equals and Y equals. So I can type in X equals T squared minus 2 and 3t. Now, notice when you hit your variable button, how am I getting t? Uh, just you just hit your variable button, yes? Where's that the variable, variable where you normally get x, it says x, t, theta, n on it. It's depend it'll give you the variable depending on what mode you're in. And then I'm going to do zoom 6 because I don't know what I graphed lately. Hmm, what's wrong? Did it give you half of that one? Oh, nope. mine gave me a line. Yeah, mine gave me a. I wonder. Okay, hold on. I thought half of it was right. Oh, okay. yes, what I know. Let's bring that through. Kylie, what did you do? Did you put a square? Okay, yeah, what did you do? Because I have a line. I have a line. I go. Same. What's different here, guys? What? I forgot. What mode are we in? No, but. Oh, I did the wrong equation. That's why I got it. You're in degree. I was in degree. I just changed to. Maybe nope. you have a plot. What? Have a plot. Why is mine reversed? I got this now. What's your Wait, What'd you change? I didn't have the right equation. I might not have I had this one. I know. No, I, I had this one. What am I doing wrong? Okay, well, I'm glad you guys are getting the right thing because. Okay, so Emma's still lost with me. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Sorry, teacher fail here. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm glad some of you are getting it right. Oh, I forgot the squared. Okay, so let me retype these. Since. And then y is 3t. It's just a dot. There we go. I just put it in the wrong thing. So did I. I just figured right. mine out, Maria. Oh, I just did a zoom six and I got this line. Oh, wait, you did a zoom six? Yeah. What do you Hold on, I can't wrong. remember how to do zoom. How do you do yeah. zoom? Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Zoom. I got a zoom six. I did zoom six. Why should that matter? Then I zoomed oh, in again and oh. I got like a. Well, that's why. Mine's like really zoomed out. Yeah, so what zoom did you guys do? I did zoom six and I zoomed out. I did zoom six, which was standard. Wait, my zoom um, six is just a straight line. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the zoom settings. I zoomed in though, and this still looks pretty straight. This, that's my zoom six. I'm still getting a line. So I have no idea. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to figure this out. But this was the idea of what was supposed to happen. 
Now, what I was also going to have you guys do, I don't know, mine's not cooperating. We'll figure it out here in a moment. I was going to suggest you graph this one. Did it work for you? I don't know. Yes. I'm kind of hesitant because mine's. Well, I didn't try it on that. So do you now, have to take it off parametric mode or do you just. No, you still, no I'm talking about graphing this right here. Yeah, I oh, my mine. gosh. I have. Now, I, I will say what mode do you need to be in here? Not degrees. You will have to be in radians for this one, I believe. Now, see, this graph what's supposed to graph for me. Oh, my gosh. Did you get a circle? Yeah. It, like, went on a bunch of oh, it's I a radian, too. Uh -huh. It's like a really thick weird. circle. Weird. Okay, what? this is doing weird stuff. Well, I have so that you? is yours zoomed in. That's cool. That is really that's neat. Okay, hey, I'm learning new stuff here. What this is fun. I don't remember these issues. I thought these issues. I got a circle. Yeah. It looks like one of those things you used to play with as a kid. Spirograph. Yeah. Oh, wait, now it's just a circle. What's zero? Mine is. Where is 360? Mine is. Let me zoom in. Okay, guys. I'm going to end this video because the video is still going on. Page 474, 7 through 24. I didn't look. I thought there was somewhere you have to graph them using a calculator. I'll have to double check that because I was thinking there were. But I'm not sure what's going on with the mode here. So. Radio.